What's up, everybody? Uh, doing uh, another song here. This is an, actually an old one. Uh, this is Killer Mike. Uh, the song's called Reagan. And if you don't like political stuff, if you don't like me getting political, if you don't like politics in your music, then you may want to just watch something else because I am going to get political. This song is political and I am not going to uh, ignore that part of it. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I got my coffee, so I'm ready to go, obviously. Someday, I'm going to parlay this into a coffee sponsorship. Just watch. Uh, I'm going to be making those big coffee bucks. Um, two things before I get started. I am not a professional music reviewer. I am not uh, a vocal coach or an expert. Um, so if you're expecting that, go, go somewhere else. Uh, I don't say that it, to be like, rude i'm just saying if you're going to be frustrated by me not being an expert you're going to be frustrated um part two is please don't be a dick that's that's my number one rule i know i always mention it second but it's my number one rule um i try to be respectful to the artists when i do these i try to be thoughtful in my reviews uh and i would just ask that you give me a little bit of that in return all right let's just try to keep it keep it respectful between us um, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. This is Killer Mike with Reagan. It also sounds like the opening to Space Mountain, this music does. Our government has a firm policy not to capitulate to terrorist demands, that no concessions policy remains in force, in spite of the wildly speculative and false stories of our arms for hostages and alleged ransom payments, we did not, repeat, did not trade weapons or anything else for hostages. The bullet of the bullet, some freedom or some bullshit. Will we ever do it bigger? Just keep settling for little shit. We brag on having bread, but none of us are bakers. We all talk having greens, but none of us on acres. If none of us on acres and none of us grow wheat, then who will feed our people when our people need to eat? So it seems our people starve from lack of understanding. Cause all we seem to give them is some balling and some dancing. And some talking about our car and imaginary mansions. We should be indicted for bullshit we inciting. Children deaf and pretend that it's exciting. We are advertisements for agony and pain. We exploit the youth, we tell them to join the gang. We tell them dope stories, introduce them to the gang. Just like I love a North introduced us to cocaine. In the 80s when them bricks came on military plane. A few months ago, I told the American people I did not trade arms for hostages. My heart and my best intentions still tell me that's true, but the facts and the evidence tell me it is not. The end of the Reagan era, I'm like Lemma 12 old enough to understand the shit that changed forever. They declared the war on drugs, like a war on terror, but what it really did was let the police terrorize whoever. But mostly black boys, but they would call us niggas, and lay us on our belly while they fingers on their triggers. They boots was on our head, they dogs was on our crotches, and they would beat us up if we had diamonds on our watches, and they would Take our drugs and monies as they pick our pockets. I guess that that's the privilege of policing for some profits. But thanks to Reaganomics, prison turned to profits. Cause free labor's the cornerstone of U.S. economics. Cause slavery was abolished unless you are imprisoned. You think I am bullshitting, then read the 13th Amendment. Involuntary servitude and slavery, it prohibits. That's why they giving drug offenders time in double digits. Ronald Reagan was an actor, not at all a factor. Just an employee of the country's real masters. Just like the Bushes, Clinton. And Obama, just another talking head telling lies on teleprompters. If you don't believe the theory, then argue with this logic. Why did Reagan and Obama both go after Gaddafi? We invading sovereign soil, going after oil. Taking countries is a hobby paid for by the oil lobby. Same as in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm a dinner judge, say they coming for Iran. They only love the rich and how they load the pole. If I say any more, they might be at my door. Shh, who the fuck is that? Staring in my window, doing that surveillance on Mr. Michael Rinder. I'm dropping off the grid before they pump the lid. I leave you with four words. I'm glad Reagan did. Reagan. Ronald Wilson. 
Six Wilson, six Reagan, six, six, six. All right. I mean, this this is a uh, this is a, a heavy song, and historically pretty uh, pretty much accurate. Um, you know, there's a few things to to mention. One, I lived for a while in Arkansas, and in Arkansas there was a airport in a town called Mena, M E N A, and from Mena was where they were flying some of those drug planes. Um, there is a movie about it starring, I think, Tom Cruise. I think Tom Cruise is in it. Um, about this pilot who was basically flying contraband for the government. Uh, it's a true story. Uh, Ronald Reagan. It's hard to know, really, how much he was involved, right? You know, in the song... Mike says, you know, he was an actor, not a not at all a factor. Um, I don't know. I mean, he he certainly his second term. People say you could tell that there was like a decline in his um, his ability to do things. I don't know how much he was doing in his first term. I was not around for the Reagan years, but I do know that Ronald Reagan was an actor. He did have a lot of gay friends. And he did let the AIDS pandemic just go unchecked. He had friends die from HIV slash AIDS, right? Well, HIV that developed into AIDS. And they didn't address it until 1986. <clears throat> 1986, 1987. Um, you know, we did trade weapons for hostages. There, There is no... There is no like satisfactory total proof, like a, a contract or anything that says the CIA brought crack into inner cities, but it's pretty clear that they did. Um, if you've never heard of civil asset forfeiture, I highly recommend you go look into that. Uh, John Oliver did an excellent piece on it actually. Um, and then there are books, um, I would highly recommend The New Jim Crow, which is about the war on drugs, but it also deals a lot with civil asset forfeiture. Um, it is crazy that it is allowed in this country. Basically, what civil asset forfeiture is, is a, a cop can, say, pull you over and ask you if you have any cash on you. And let's say you're going to go buy a car. Okay, You, you bought a car on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Market, and you're bringing cash to go pay for it. Cop pulls you over, and he says... Uh, do you have any cash? And you say, yeah, I got, I got a couple grand. I'm going to go pick up a car. And he says, mm, I think that that cash is going to be used for drugs. Um, so I'm seizing it. Now, here is the great part about that. If you're a cop, you don't have to give a citation, right? He doesn't have to give you a ticket. There's, there doesn't have to be any record that he pulls you over. They keep that shit. The way it works is you're not being charged. Your money is being charged with a crime. And your money is presumed guilty, right? In the U.S., theoretically, we're presumed innocent until proven guilty, right? That money is presumed guilty. You have to get a lawyer to represent you to try and prove that your money was not being used for illegal purposes. Um, in the U.S., if you are charged with a crime, you have a right to representation. If you can't afford representation the government will provide you with a lawyer, right? A public defender. You do not have that right when it comes to uh, civil asset forfeiture because your money has been charged with a crime, not you. So you have to go to court, pay for that, and try to argue before a judge that the money that they stole from you was not being used for nefarious purposes. And sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you have like the receipt, right? You have your, the email that says, uh, you know, uh, I'll meet you on the 18th uh, and you can pick up the car. But let's say they took 50 bucks from you, which happens. They, they will shake you down for fucking pocket change. Uh, if you want to, I'm ranting a little bit here, but the reason stuff in Ferguson, right? The Michael Brown 
Ferguson stuff. The reason that went so crazy is partly because of civil asset forfeiture, because cops were shaking people down in Ferguson for like a dollar fifty. They would just pull you over, take your change, and then send you on your way. Um, they have killed people for this before. There was a, a case in California where they were trying to take a guy's mansion. Um, and so they were trying to prove that he was growing marijuana on the grounds so that they could seize his house, right? Uh, and they killed him. They killed him during that raid. They didn't prove that he had marijuana, but they did kill him. And here's the kicker. If they prove or do not get it contested, right? If you don't go to court and prove that your, your property was not actually being used for, you know, illicit gains, uh, they get to keep 80% of it, right? So if they take two grand from you, they get to keep $1,600 and $400 goes to the federal government, right? That's the, that's the deal that the government has worked out. If they took that house, they took that mansion, if they sold it, they would get to keep 80% of the profits, right? We're talking millions of dollars for the police department. And people complain about police departments being underfunded. Um, our police departments are funded more than every military in the world, bar like two. And, and one of them is ours. Absolute, absolute bullshit. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other stuff. In this song, you know, Rodney King in the 90s, the L.A. riots. Um, and this shit keeps happening, right? George Floyd. You know, he's talking about putting their boots on our head. They, they didn't put their boot on his head. They put their knee on his neck until he died. And I'm astonished. I'm astonished that we got a conviction out of that, even though it was on camera with them killing him. They immediately pivoted to try and smear him, Right? Just because he may have been a criminal does not mean that they should kill him. I, I, it's not complicated. Police in this country seem to think that they get to be the executioner of uh, whoever. They're literally two days ago, or yesterday, I'm not sure. I just saw this story yesterday. Cops did a drive-by on somebody without a gun. They just were driving past and started shooting at him. They hit a bystander. I... We, uh, we in this country have many sins to atone for. And uh, the way normal civilians, and normal people, but also this, the institutions have treated black people is, uh, I don't know, man. There is, uh, there's just not much I can say about it. Pretty much no amount of restitution is enough. Um, people talk about reparations and how, like, blah, blah, blah. Well, we can't do reparations. It's too much money. Blah. Bullshit. We built this country on the backs of black people, right? And, and not just this country. There are a lot of places that were built on the backs of primarily black slave labor. Uh, and they don't get a cent. They don't get a penny of that. They didn't even get to live in most cities, right? They... I will try to remain... Try to remain calm and uh, not not go off too much on this. But anybody that says, I don't know why black people complain so much. You know, they're just looking to be victims. That's a person who doesn't know black people. Um, I'll tell a quick story, okay? And then I'll wrap up this video. I was living in Los Angeles in 2016, 2015, 2016. And I had a roommate, okay? My roommate was black. He's from PG County, Maryland. He's a rapper. You should check him out. Uh, I, I'm not going to put his business out there just in case he, he doesn't want me to. Um, but it, he, he's, he's a talented guy. Uh, when we were living together, we were both working at the same company. And uh, we were both living the straight edge lifestyle, right? No drugs, no alcohol, nothing. In fact, we're both preacher's kids. Uh, his dad's a preacher. My dad's a preacher. It all, it all kind of worked out really nicely. Um, and we were swapping stories at one point. And uh, we'd both been pulled over twice. I got pulled over once for following a semi too close. And I got a warning. And I got a warning a second time for being parked on the side of the road 
while my dad was pulled over because we just bought a new car and we were driving home and the new car didn't have plates on it, right? So I was pulled over waiting and cop rolled up and basically was trying to figure out what I was doing, right? Scary encounters. Any encounter with the police is scary, but not, not too big of a deal. Um, both times my, my buddy got pulled over, they brought the canines out. Literally, they brought the canine units to search his car. All I can think of is that it's because he was black. Now, if, if there's a, another explanation for why that was, sure. Well, go ahead and try it. But he wasn't breaking any laws when they got pulled over. I think he got pulled over to checkpoint once. Right? Like, he's not breaking any laws. They're just checking your license to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, on an expired license and make sure you're not driving drunk or whatever. And they called the canines, brought the dogs out. But they could have killed him, right? And as far as I can tell, it's only because he was black. And that is, that is deeply depressing. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we can do about it um, other than people like me, white people specifically, particularly white people who have money, who have influence, who have privilege of some kind. We all, you know, like I get a certain level of respect because I'm white in this country, whether or not people know if I have money or not. Um, but people who get even more respect than I do, people who are more wealthy, more connected than me, we got to stop taking this shit. That that's it. Like we we it, it's got to be so unacceptable to us that every time it happens you see another summer of protests like in 2020. People people can talk all they want about those protests, but no cities got burned down. That is absolute bullshit. Um the vast majority of those protests were nonviolent. They've done research. They have done statistical analysis to say those protests were, by and large, just people getting out in public and yelling a lot. Uh, you know, there were occasional outbursts that I do not condemn. Absolutely not. Property crime is not violence. I don't give a shit if they burn down a police precinct. I don't give a shit if they smash some windows. You can, you can call me a radical if you want. Um, but I don't care. People are getting killed. People are getting murdered by police in their homes, in the streets, in their fucking places of business, in their cars, and nothing changes and nothing happens. And if somebody burns down a building in reaction to that because they're mad and there's nothing they can do, I, I don't care. I, I don't care. Um, I endorse it. I got to wrap up. Thank you all for watching. If you watched this far, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully I've said something useful. Um, I, I'd be interested to hear your comments, hear your thoughts. I'm not an expert on this stuff. You know, I try to know, I try to learn, I try to be as involved as I can, but I only know so much. My life experience is what it is. Um, I, I, I would be interested to hear what other people have to say, but I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day, everybody. Um, drink more water and don't talk to cops.